Hello, this is Ken Bodicher, also known as Bad Ken in the Battleforge forums and Cart in the game. This video is a replay of the single player PvE map, The Treasure Fleet, part of the story of the treasure and the king. It's on expert difficulty and I'm using a full nature deck customized for this map. First a disclaimer, I'd recommend that you do not play this map the way I've done it. The strategy depends too much on exact execution. If you get the tiniest thing wrong, you're doomed. You have to be very careful moving groups around the side camps later on. Also, this approach depends on some random things happening the right way. So at the end, I'll describe some alternatives that might make things easier. The start is simple enough. I summon a wind weaver, build a power well, fortification wall, and summon a shaman before I start attacking the nearest twilight infestation. But this is the first place something can go wrong. If your shaman heals at the wrong time, you won't get through this part. If your wind weavers don't focus on the archers the building at the right time, they'll die. I ended up micromanaging pretty much everything here, including keeping the shaman in the right place so the makeshift tower will take out the twilight minions. If the minions get randomly blasted toward the wind weavers, though, you'll have to switch to attacking them. It means the archers might get you. It's just a big mess. Next part is easier, though, although it does start throwing era 2 units at you pretty early, those twilight slayers and claws. All you need to do is line up your wind weavers near the wall with a shaman nearby and let them do their thing. And while the fighting is going on there, build the second power well in the main base. Now there's a little break in the action while I wait until I have enough power to build these two power wells. I'm going to put a primal defender near the second orb too, that way I can get my force on the move to stay ahead of the treasure wagon and build the orb later. I mentioned that the deck is customized for this map, and the main reason for that is that I'm not using any era 4 units because the fourth orb is heavily guarded. And by request, I'm not using Mark of the Keeper or Enlightenment either. There's a Twilight Bombard near the third orb, which is very tough to take out without specialized units. You need either a large group of siege units, or what I use here, Mono Wings. And later I bring in Era 3 units with drones to fight large units, Horrors and Vilebloods, uh, Fathom Lords as tanks, and Time Shifter Spirits for more powerful healing. This here is another place where things can go wrong. If you bring a large force near that first cave, it starts spewing Twilight Archers, making it hard for you to take on the waves coming in. Notice I send the Mono Wings ahead to soften up the ground units. I don't do that when there are Archers nearby though, because Mono Wings are very fragile. The key to this section is to stay ahead of the wagon. If you can prevent the wagon getting damaged, it's much more likely to survive the pounding it's going to take from the Twilight Bombard at the end of the path. There's just no way to take out that Bombard before the wagon gets there. Okay, now the Twilight have started to attack the main base. You don't really need to defend it, just make sure they keep the walls repaired. And as you'll see in a little bit, they might break through, but they won't do much damage. As soon as I have four Mono Wings and enough power, I build the second Nature Orb. And coming up next here, we have the dreaded Twilight Will Sapper Tower, which we last saw in the Soul Tree. I need to take out the stuff around it first, though, so I set up my Wind Weavers and Shaman and pull with my Mono Wings. And while that fight's going on, I built a Spike Group and a Shaman to defend the second orb. The Primal Defender there has to be temporarily switched to Skywatch to take out a Twilight Creep, which is like a Magma Spore, but a bit stronger. And when the Creep is dead, I switch the tower back to help with ground defense. The interesting thing about the fighting the Twilight Will Sapper here is that as long as the wagon is nearby, the paralyzing attack focuses on the wagon, which is immune, so your forces can get in free attacks. You have to be lucky with timing to take advantage of that, though. Now the Twilight Warriors have broken through the wall, which is still repairing, and they'll do a little damage to a wagon there before the makeshift towers take them out. I'm more worried about staying ahead of the wagon that's on the move and getting six mono wings for the attack at the end of the path. Park the shamans and wind weavers near the cave there, and I'm being careful to keep the mono wings out of range of the sky scorcher tower. I should shred them. Once they're in place, I cast a ray of light spell and focus them on the ranged units first. And meanwhile, back at the second orb, a group's about to take down my primal defender, but I'll just replace it with a living tower. After the mono wings kill everything that can hurt them, they focus on the twilight devastator so it won't be able to hurt the wagon. And then once he's down, I carefully move them again to avoid the Sky Scorcher and put them on the Twilight Bombard. Bombard got a few hits in on the wagon, but the wagon survived. I have to wait until the Mono Wings finish off the Bombard before moving my Shamans and Wind Weavers in, and back at the second orb I made a Breeding Grounds to reduce the cost of building my next force. As soon as the Bombard is nearly dead, I move in to take out the Sky Scorcher before I can build the Fortification Wall. I destroy my Mono Wings and I summon another Wind Weaver to run over and build the third orb and a couple power walls. 
Now, believe it or not, guarding the first wagon was the hardest part of this map for me. From here on, I have three orbs. I have arrow three counters for pretty much anything they're going to throw at me. All I really need to do is defend the orbs, stay ahead of the wagons, and keep them from getting hurt. My next army is mostly ghost spears. Uh, they're only arrow two, but they have a strong attack, and they can fight both small and medium units, which is mostly what I'll be running into. This wagon is already fairly damaged thanks to the Twilight Warriors breaking into the main base earlier, so I'll have to guard it carefully. In the northeast, I'll replace the Shaman with the Time Shifter Spirit. The Time Shifter Spirit has a Mark of the Keeper-like ability, but I didn't actually use that for this map. I just want their chain heal. I'll also replace the Shaman at the second orb with the Time Shifter Spirit, and the Ghost Spears will also be supported by a Time Shifter Spirit along with some Swamp Drakes. The army goes north to head off the first group of attackers on the path. Some Twilight Slayers. They're kind of a pain because they seem to just run right through the Ghost Spears, but with the help of the Living Tower they go down. I'm a little behind the wagon now. That's not good. This is another timing sensitive part of this strategy. Because I'm behind the wagon, I have to send my army along the north wall so that I don't get the attention of the Twilight Bugs that are heading west. Second Orb Defense takes care of them. Now there's some attackers coming in from the east, but I'm ignoring them and going after the Twilight Slavers north of the wagon. I don't want to have to fight everything at once, including the archers that appear out of the cave. And I want to avoid the Twilight Negator. It looks like a swift claw and it has an aura that prevents spell casting. If I ignore it, it goes away after a bit, and I can use spells to help manage the fight. Now I'm behind the wagon again. My Swamp Drakes can catch up quickly, but they don't let me put down any crowd control, which is what I really need. The second orb is taking some fairly strong attacks. I'll need better defenses there soon. When my ground units do catch up to the wagon, I use Curse of Oink to keep some of the attacks off the wagon, and I kill what I can while I'm catching up. Normally the Twilight Creeps would be a priority, but they're attacking my Ghost Spears instead of the wagon. By the way, this is another tricky place to fight. If any flying units go too far east or west, they attract a lot of attention you really don't want. I cast a Ray of Light there for a little extra healing, but I didn't really stay in it long enough because Ray of Light requires you to stay put while it heals you. My army did some damage, but it needs to keep moving because there's more ahead. The wagon is very damaged at this point. Swamp Drakes catch up first, but I really need my ground troops in there to take the heat off the wagon. And when I do catch up, the wagon has seven health left. But seven is enough. The second wagon made it through. In this strategy, I don't want to lose an early wagon. The Twilight gets stronger with each wagon, and since I only have era 3 units, it would be very hard to guard the last wagon. Since I'm done with this army, I need a different mix to guard the next wagon, so I destroy the army, which gives me back some of their power in the void pool. And since stronger attacks are coming, I put up a Mineweaver tower in the northeast. The Twilight attacking the next wagon it will add Twilight Hags, which have long-range attack that knocks back small units, Twilight Horrors, which are stronger versions of the Fathom Lord, and Twilight Vile Bloods. Large units will leave a pool of blood, does significant damage to anything near it. There's still some small and medium units, so Ghost Spears are still useful. I probably should have used a tunnel to bring back my other Ghost Spears, but I'm just making more. And now at the second orb, it's Razor Leaf time! As much as I love Razor Leafs, they're really only useful for static defense, and on this map, the army has to stay on the move. I do try bringing them along, but rooting and uprooting them all the time is a pain. And now that Twilight Hags are in the mix, the Ghost Spears are having a hard time staying on their feet. Fathom Lords and Swamp Drakes, even though they have an exile attack, are really the best bet for handling Twilight Hags on the run. For the large units coming up, I'm making drones. They aren't really ideal because the Hags knock them back too, but drones do large damage. And to add some extra firepower that's good against air and ground, I'll start bringing in deep coil worms now too. I'm trying much harder to stay close to or ahead of this wagon. Twilight coming at me are doing a lot more damage and they can kill the wagon pretty quickly. Those Twilight Hags, they're only got a few shots in on the wagon and it's hurting already. I'm going to try to do my best not to let that happen again. Now here we have uh, Vile Blood and uh, Horror and a couple of Hags and I cast a little ray of light there to keep my guys alive and as soon as the vile blood drops I get out of there in a hurry. And now we're up against a smaller force, a devastator and some slayers. They go down pretty quickly. Notice the deep coil worm is making a great rear guard. They're kind of staying in the back of the forest and then if any and twilight hags t tend to come up from behind 
and the deep coil worm makes short work of them. And I'm going to park my army in this little choke point here and uh, cast a ray of light to keep them healed up. This is, again, the tricky part of the map where if you go too far left or right, uh, you'll get the attention of some pretty powerful units. I'm trying to avoid that. Looks like I got somebody coming up from behind, so my best bet here is to just cast some crowd control and run past the guys in front of me. Curse of Oink followed up by a creeping paralysis there. And back into orb number two, we have a Twilight Hulk. And uh, I had to cast a little crowd control on him and a healing spell there as well. But fortunately my defenses were able to take care of him. I'm trying to stay as close as I can to the wagon, but my objective here is mainly to keep things attacking my army instead of the wagon. Uh, things are getting pretty messy. My units are getting pretty badly hurt. But they did effectively block the area there. So the wagon was able to get through. And that is number three. And I got a little carried away here, and instead of destroying my army right away, I decided I would try and take care of some of these remaining units that had been following me. Uh, the only problem with that is that I got the attention of a Twilight Dragon. I didn't really even notice it until I had gone down south a little bit here and I wanted to clear out this area and then I noticed oh there's a twi twilight dragon on my tail so I just at that point I just destroyed my army because I wasn't going to take that area plus the dragon Your forces are under attack. so it's time to rebuild my force uh, at the second orb and put in a few more defenses since there's going to be more attacks coming and they're going to be stronger so I'm starting off with my heavy hitters the fathom lord deep coil worm Swamp Drakes, and there's some Twilight Death Gliders coming in, and they are really hard to deal with uh, with these tier 3 units for some reason. Maybe they just have a lot of health, but I have a hard time taking them down. Fortunately, these ones started by attacking the base instead of attacking the wagon. Here comes another Twilight Hulk. A little crowd control, and uh, we'll take care of him, and I have enough of an army now to take out this first attack wave. Lots of hags. And I've got a razor leaf coming along with me this time. I figured I would try it out and see what happened. Again, doing my best to stick right close to the wagon. The only exception there being the razor leaf because he's just going to be too slow to, to really keep up very effectively. I'm getting a little bit behind here though having to deal with those flyers that are just really strong. I, probably mainly because I don't have the right counter for it. I'm not, I don't have any ranged units that do large damage, I think. Now we have a Twilight Abomination, which is... fortunately we got rid of pretty quickly there with a second Deep Coil Worm. And a couple more uh, Swamp Drakes. I'm keeping the crowd control going and keeping the healing spells going to keep my guys up. I've pretty much almost lost the defenses in the northeast. And the southwest, as you'll see in a moment, is in trouble too. A monument is under attack. But this was pretty much the point that I knew I had it because I have a fairly strong army there. The, uh, the wagon is almost to its destination. Big attacks coming in the northeast and southwest, but I am keeping up with the wagon. I was even able to take care of that Twilight Dragon. My army was strong enough to keep it off the wagon. Here's the southwest attack that just basically wiped out my southwest area, killed the orb, killed all the towers. He's heading for the main base, but look here, the last wagon is almost through. So again, I'm just running a delaying action with my last few units here. Uh, not much defense is left. My main base is about to be demolished, but it doesn't matter, because I won the race. This strategy took me dozens of tries. Mark of the Keeper or Enlightenment would have made it much easier. A mixed deck would be better too. Nature strength is not an attack, and this map is about keeping the path clear, and that requires attack power. 
hope you've enjoyed this replay, and I hope you can learn from my mistakes.